Now let's take a look at how you can use SWR, the React hook for data fetching in the Next.js application. Using SWR, you can fetch the data more easily than the fetch function of JavaScript. We already learned the basics of SWR in the Next.js course. So if you don't know anything about this, I'm going to put a link in the description. Now what you have to do is, you have to first head on to swr.versel.app and click on this get started button. When you click on it, you have to first install SWR in the project. So I'm going to copy this, open my terminal, open a new bash shell, enter into my project directory. And here I'm going to say npm install SWR. This is going to install this library in the project. So once you have this library, let me clear the screen, back to the browser again. And here you can see for normal RESTful APIs with JSON data, first you need to create a feature function. So I'm going to just copy this function right from here and paste that inside my project. Now instead of creating this function inside these components, I'm going to create this function inside this library folder right here. So we can access this folder anywhere in the component folder. So right here, I'm going to create a file and name this file feature.js. And here I'm going to paste this function. Now let me first explain this function. This function is going to take arguments and this arguments is going to pass to this fetch function. And then it's going to return the JSON data to this variable. Now once we get this data to this fetch, so when you scroll down, here you can notice, you have to use here, use SWR hook. And then you have to pass your feature function as a second argument. As a first argument, you pass the URL endpoint. You can notice here. And this is going to destructure few properties. So you can get these properties inside an object and return your response. So what we are going to do is instead of doing the same thing for all the components, I'm going to make it reusable. To make this reusable, we create a function and then we call use SWR to it. And then we pass the endpoints and then we return the user data as a response. Here inside this feature function, right down here, I'm going to create a function. So, so I'm going to say here export default function and we name this function feature. So instead of this feature function, we're just going to rename it to response like this. And here I'm going to specify name to this function feature like this. And here we need to use use SWR hook. So at the top here, we need to say import use SWR from SWR library. From this library, call this use SWR hook. And once you have this hook right inside this function, you can say constant, this structure, data, and error. And then you can specify here equal to sign and say use SWR, something like this. And then you pass your base URL here. And as a second argument, you pass your feature function. Now, as you all know, the base URL is this one. So let me just copy this constant variable and paste that right inside this file. But now what I want, instead of creating this base URL and pass this hard-coded value, we can store this value inside the .env file as well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just back to the block. Here I'm going to create a new file and name this file .env.local. And inside this file, I'm going to create this base URL. So I'm going to copy this variable, specify that here is equal to, and then I'm going to specify this base URL here, this one. Let me save these changes. And then you have to rebuild your application. So just open the terminal, stop the development server, clear the screen, and then start it again using npm run dev. Just out of that, to use this base URL, you have to back to the feature. And here you have to specify process dot env dot name of your variable, which is base URL. Now let me just check this value first. So I'm going to back to the section two here. I'm going to say console dot log and I'm going to print here this variable like this. Save the changes. And you can see if you open your terminal right down here, you have your base URL. So this is the valid variable. Let me save this. Let me close this file. Keep in mind, you're not going to get this file in the Git repository because we already have this file ignore from this dot ignore file. So you have to create this file manually. Once you create that, create a variable inside it and back to the feature function. 
and just out of that here i'm going to specify the base url i'm going to first pass here back tick operator pass here my variable base url like this and then i also want to specify the endpoint as you know this is my endpoint api post so we pass this endpoint here but what i want i want to reuse this function multiple times so instead of passing this endpoint here i'm going to just pass a parameter to this fetcher function so here i'm going to pass endpoint like this and then we pass this endpoint right here that's it and at the end as a second parameter we pass response function this one now once you have your data inside this data variable and once you have your error inside this error variable we can just return that so we are going to just simply say here return in the object we can say data or you can specify here data like this or you can just get rid of this first property it will create a property and value and then i'm going to say is loading then i'm going to pass here error if we don't have anything inside this error and if we don't have anything inside the data then print the loading message or you can say then return true to this loading just for that here i'm going to say is error is equal to error if you have error then specify value to this property the fetcher function is now ready let me show you how you can use this let me save this file close this fetcher this helper function and inside this second section let me use this function so right up here i'm going to first import this fetcher function so i'm going to say here import from double dot forward slash library and from that we have this fetcher function so i'm going to just simply get this fetcher function inside this file just out of that here i'm going to say constant in the object as you know we can destructure these properties data is loading and is error so we can say here data is loading and is error and we can destructure these properties from the fetcher function and as you know to this fetcher function we need to specify the endpoint so in the single code i can specify api post something like this and then here i can say console.log data let me save these changes back to the project and if i inspect oops i think i misspelled something here we have the 404 not found error this is because i think this statement is going to execute on the server side so let me get rid of this process.env file and specify my localhost 3000 here now let me save the changes back to the project and reload it you can see i'm going to have the result what i want but you can also see here we have two undefined messages to remove it you have to grab this console.log in the if statement you have to say if we have data only then return this console message let me save this back to the project and reload it you can see i'm going to have the result what i want now i can specify this data to this latest post section so next i'm going to show you i can do that